In this video, I'm going to show a couple of different ways of working with the Zlog2 footage in DaVinci Resolve. The Zlog2 profile is a flat log profile uh, like Vlog on a Panasonic or D-Log on a DJI camera or N-Log on a Nikon camera and so on and so forth. I brought this question up on the Zcam E2 user group on Facebook. I've been shooting with Zcam since 2018. I've been shooting with my E2 F6 since 2019. And I'm still not quite sure what the perfect workflow would be in DaVinci Resolve. So yeah, if you're working in a software other than DaVinci Resolve, um, I wouldn't say that you're not going to learn anything here, but in this video, I'm going to stick with just DaVinci Resolve since it has specific uh, workflows that we can use. So anyway, I asked this question about, you know, what kind of color space do they start off in? And I got some, uh, some good replies. A lot of them talking about using um, LUTs. Some of them talking about using the ACES workflow. So I'll look into those. Now, I'm mostly grading in HDR these days just because I think it's a fun color space to be working in. But for this video, I'm going to stick with Rec. 709 since that's the most common. And I, I would suggest for most people to, to stick with Rec. 709 because you're going to get the most consistent results on various devices, uh, TVs, cell phones, computers, laptops, whatever it is. Rec. 709 is going to be consistent across all those devices for the most part, whereas HDR is not. Uh, not yet anyway. It's still kind of a new and upcoming technology. So first of all, let's dive into Resolve's color management here. Uh, so you open up the project settings, uh, go to color management here. This is where Resolve starts off at in uh, DaVinci YRGB. That's basically it's not color managed. You can see here there's an option for color managed. Um, and then I'm going to set this to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is the most common color space and gamma out there. And I'm just going to hit save, and we can see that this is what Z-Log footage looks like, relatively flat. Uh, it needs some contrast and, and some color grading to get it to a nice looking image. So you can just go into your color page and start grading right away. Of course, you know, you just throw on some contrast and then you're like 90% there. I mean, for a lot of people, this would be a pretty, you know, pretty good image. Um, it's within, I'm not clipping or crushing anything here. It's within the top and bottom of my scopes. So, I mean, this, this is... This is a pretty good looking image. And all I did was add just a little bit of contrast here. Well, quite a bit of contrast really, but I mean, that's that's acceptable. You can go that route, right? Now, if you wanted to play around with Resolve's color managed mode, here's where you get some interesting issues here. So I'm gonna stick with the default uh, SDR, which means Rec. 709. And what Resolve's trying to do here is now it's going to pay attention to the input color space that your files are flagged with. Now, this one is showing as Rec. 709 scene referred. The problem with Zlog footage is that DaVinci Resolve doesn't understand what Zlog 2 is. It doesn't understand that profile. Uh, if I right click on this and I go to input color space, you'll see here's all the different profiles that Blackmagic recognizes. Blackmagic's the company behind DaVinci Resolve. And you'll find uh, here's some S gamut for the Sony cameras, here's red gamuts. Here's uh, more red with Dragon cameras. Here's some Canon stuff. Of course, the Black Magic cameras, and, and then of course right here is Ari for the Ari cameras. So it recognizes. Oh, and also here's I know it's Inlog. I wonder if it has yeah DJI. So it recognizes these color profiles from a lot of different cameras. There's Panasonic's Vlog, the major brands Panasonic, Sony. Uh, there's even Fuji. I'm I'm kind of surprised there's Fuji there, but notoriously it does not have Z Cam. And if you had some other kind of camera like uh, a Ken Affinity there's no color profile recognition for that camera, for those cameras either. So you're kind of at a, a quandary here, like what do I set my input color space to for my Z-Log2 footage? Obviously, it's not V-Log, it's probably close, it's not in-Log, it might be close to that one, it's not F-Log, it's not DJI's log, it's certainly not Black Magic. Uh, I know some people are setting it to RE log C. Um, let's, let's take a look and see what that does. Um, there we go, and I think it might be on this clip. Okay, so yeah, that did make a change. Let me undo that here. I'll put that back to what it was here with uh, scene referred. Okay, so yeah, that's it's actually doing something. It's not a bad thing what it's doing. So again, this is our flat Z-Log profile. Even though this says Rec. 709 scene, it looks the same as it did before. And if I switch that back to the RE Log C, I mean, that's not a bad image, right? Let's stick on that clip. If I look at my scopes over here, so I'm not clipping or crushing anything. So I didn't apply any other color changes. All I did was change the input color space on this clip. Now let's try a different one. Let's try, I, I heard some guys, or I saw some guys rather uh, use Sony's S gamut. 
S log three. So let's choose this one here, the Cine S log three. And again, that's not a bad image. It's slightly different than the R log C, of course. Um, but again, that's, that's a pretty acceptable looking image. But if you're like me, uh, you want to have a bit more control over your image. And the issue with using this is this kind of gets you to a place where you have a little bit less control. Um, now, it's all mathematical transforms, so it's not like, a, you know, you're not clipping anything, you're not losing any information. So, for example, like if I push this way up and then I add another node and push this way down, this is the beauty of Resolve. See, I, I haven't clipped anything, even though I'm clipped on this node. If I bypass this, this node, it would appear as being clipped. I can bring it back down here because Resolve operates in a floating point space where it's not clipping any of that information. It's just all data. It's all numbers. That being said, I want to have a bit more control over my image. So what can I do? So Resolve's color managed mode uh, is convenient if you have uh, footage that Resolve recognizes. A little less convenient if you have footage that it doesn't recognize because uh, this is not going to be a perfect match for the Z-Log footage. So let me set this back to whatever the default was here. And the other issue I have with Resolve's color managed mode is um, if you're doing something like, say, you're outputting to a bunch of different uh, color spaces, maybe you're outputting to, um, let's turn this off automatic, and say you're going to output to HDR, or you're going to output to, um, let's see, uh, P3D65 for, say, a theater release, um, probably more like this right here, or for you know Netflix, not like you're going to be outputting for Netflix, but I think Netflix is taking P3D65. Or if you're outputting to any other color space, the way this color management mode is supposed to work is that it's going to automatically interpret your footage to that output color space because it understands, um, you know, with the input color space being set, you apply any other grading and it should be able to transform that on the output for you. But I've had issues where I graded everything in a color managed mode and I switched my output and it didn't look good at all. Whatever it was supposed to do, I don't think it did. And it looked terrible. So I personally don't use this mode because of that reason. I mean, that's the whole point of this mode is that it's supposed to make, you know, outputting in different color spaces easier. And it just didn't for me. So I've been sticking with this mode. And again, I'm usually in uh, this right here, the uh, SD, Rec 2020 SD 2084, 1000 nits. But Again, for the sake of this video, I would set it to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and do a traditional manual grade over here and then output however I feel fit. There's another mode that we can look at, and this is something that Zcam actually supports, and that's ACES. So let's look at this ACES mode in DaVinci Resolve. So we go back to our color management, and we can set this to ACES. Now right off the bat, you, you start to see that the, there's some uh, settings you're going to have to figure out. Um, what's the difference between ACES CC and ACES CCT? I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with ACES CCT. You can go uh, and research that and spend some time to figure out which one's better. Um, I'm just going to use this one, and again, there's a couple different modes. I'm going to pick the newest mode. And wow, look at all these settings. <laughs> ACES input transform. If we look in here, we'll see that there is no Z log to transform. Again, Blackmagic doesn't have that profile in their uh, DaVinci Resolve. We have uh, some Sony, we have some RED, there's Panasonic, we have Canon, there's Ari. It recognizes a lot of different color spaces and profiles, uh, but it does not recognize anything from Zcam. Lots of Panasonic, RED, and here's more Canon, even the R5, this is really interesting to see specific cameras in here. So we can't use this because we can't add transforms to this list. Uh, the output transform, I'm gonna keep this at Rec 709 since that's our color space mode that we're working in. Process node lets in, I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. Again, you can look in the manual, you can go research this, you can watch videos online, read articles. You can try to gather up all of that information and decide which settings are best for you. Uh, that's quite a bit of work and even if you do, you may not have 100% confidence that you're doing it correctly. For example, uh, apply resize transformations in which mode here? Ah, good question. So I'm gonna start with these settings and you'll see that the image changed right away. Let me switch back to Rec 709 here or the standard DaVinci mode. And I'll put this back on camera 2.4. Okay, so this is our regular flat Z-Log profile. This is basically how it would look off the camera if you're using a monitor right on the camera. It would look like this. 
And when we, when we go back to the ACES mode, uh, this is all the same as it was before. It looks different. If we look at the waveform, you can see how squished it is. The, the blacks are pushed way up. I mean, they're almost to the halfway point. And then the, the highlights stop right here. So it's in this really tiny, tiny, tiny range. And this clip, for whatever reason, let me change the thumbnail here. There we go. So these clips look the same. I just want to make sure that they look the same. Now, how do we get this into something that looks more correct? Uh, again, I was following some of the advice from this uh, thread that I posted. Some people were talking about the uh, ACES workflow. And there's a couple different ways to go about it. I think an easy way to do it is if we jump over to our media page, um, we can actually apply the DCTL file as a LUT. Uh, Resolve allows you to apply LUTs directly to clips. So if you see down here, there's a LUT. And at the bottom, since I've added that DCTL file to the LUT folder, uh, you can look up the manual on how to do that. Zlog2 to ACES APO. I guess that tells me I want to be using the APO mode. And we can see right away, yeah, that's done something to my footage. Um, it looks a little hot, like the highlights are really pushed right there. So on my uh, clip, I would probably go over here to my gain and pull that down. And yeah, that's tons better. Like, let's take a look at that. Like, that's that's a pretty decent looking clip. I adjust the, uh, the white balance. But uh, that's a pretty good starting place for not a whole lot of effort. Um, you know, you'd have to come over to your clips and you can select all of them and... Uh, add that LUT to those clips just by doing this. So for now, if I look at this clip, it has the same issue, and I would just do that and apply the same kind of processing that I did to that last clip. So yeah, I mean, that's that's not bad. I mean, it, that looks pretty good as far as skin tones and everything. Let me turn that off, though, because there's another way you can do it, and this may or may not be you know, a preferred route for you. And that's if you go over to your timeline uh, nodes, you can apply it as a LUT. And that's kind of what I've done here. You can see it. I have the Zlog2 LUT. If you right click, you can apply that DCTL LUT. It's not a LUT, but you can apply that DCTL as a LUT on a node. And I have the same result here. And since this is on my timeline, it's going to affect every clip in my timeline. Now, if you had mixed footage, you had some Zlog and some Zcam and then footage from you know other cameras, you could apply this on nodes on the top on the, the clips themselves but if you have everything in z-log just put it on a timeline node like this and again this is pretty much the same results as i had uh doing it the other way on uh, the clips themselves so that's two ways of using aces and i think the same idea with aces here you can change this to a different color space and gamma on your for the output and then it's set to output for that color space. This is Editor Mark jumping in here uh, just to point out that uh, that's not exactly correct. If you change that output color space in the uh, settings for ACES, it's not going to interpret your footage. When, in other words, if you're grading in Rec. 709 and you flip that over to HDR, it's not going to automatically interpret your Rec. 709 grade into an HDR grade. Um, I believe that's how the, the color managed mode is supposed to work more or less. And like I said, it didn't work for me either. So I don't think that's really um, the right way to do it. Uh, you, I've always used a color space transform on my timeline node for when I'm changing between color spaces. You do need to change the output in the color in the project settings to whatever your color space and gamma you're outputting to. And then if you apply a color space transform node on your timeline, you can get it to that color space. And that has always worked for me. All right, back to the video. And if I do... So this is basically what HDR looks like on a Rec. 709 monitor. This screen is is not uh, does not support HDR. It's basically for Rec. 709, and I'm recording in Rec. 709 the screen. So uh, if I wanted to have something to look, that looks good for the purpose of editing, um, I can go here to the Color Viewer lookup table. This is kind of a little bonus trick here, and I have some LUTs. Um, you can actually download this LUT I've made from uh, my website. Um, but here I made one that uses basically a, a color space transform. I saved it as a, a LUT. Um, you can see how now this looks like the Rec. 709 version did. And uh, you can grade and edit in HDR on an external display using a deck link card. And your um, color viewer here in Resolve will look like Rec. 709. So that's a convenient way of uh, not having to stare at a you know incorrect image on your 
screen like this. It wouldn't look so flat when you're grading in a different color space. So I've probably raised more questions than I've answered, but I've hoped that I've exposed to you a couple of different ways of working with Zlog2 footage. Uh, it's unfortunate that Blackmagic doesn't recognize that profile. And I believe, this is just my hypothesis here, my theory, that because Blackmagic and Zcam are basically competitors, they operate in more or less the same space as far as cameras and price points, that Blackmagic doesn't want to do anything to give Zcam a leg up or any kind of help. So I don't think Blackmagic is going to produce, a, you know, say, a, an Asus Transform for Zlog. You're not going to see Zlog 2 down here at the bottom of the list. Uh, you're not going to see, if I go into the Resolve Color Manage mode, you're not going to see Zlog 2 in this list, even though you see Sony and RED and Panasonic and Nikon and Fuji in here. You're not going to see Zlog on here. So that's unfortunate, but that's just the way things are. Now, there's one last thing I'll look at. I know I was about to wrap this up, but there is this thing called the Zcam Color Plugin, and I've got it here. And so let me uh, kind of undo this, get this back to a normal um, space, Rex 09, so I can show you what this does. So I'm going to bypass the grade. I'm going to bypass this DCTL. So now we're back to, um, yep, no profile, no LUT on that. So this is just the standard flat Z-Log look, right? So you can apply the Zcam Zlog plugin. Again, this is available on the Zcam website, like this. And you can see that, oh, yeah, it's done some stuff to our image. And that's actually looking not too bad. Um, there's a lot of settings in here. So yes, I, I have Zlog 2 footage, uh, a lot of sliders here, purple edge removal, saturation correction, uh, output color space. Um, if I'm on Rex 9 maybe I'd select that. If I was in HDR, maybe I'd use this. The problem I found with this plugin is it looks okay for Rex 9 output, but the HDR doesn't look very good. And also, uh, this application, or excuse me, this plugin doesn't work for some people. Um, for some people, it causes their software to crash. For other people, it doesn't work at all. And so there's it's, it's buggy in that regard. But I found that uh, these settings tend to clip um, pretty easily for, well, for example, if I do something crazy like this where I'm, I'm flatlining this, maybe I should use a different slider. Let me try the gain here. Oh, it's interesting. So it's actually keeping within the range, but it's just, I found that these settings are pretty destructive. So if I happen to crush something, that information is just gone on the next node. Like if I add this node here and I tried to bring that back with, you know, lift or something, you see how it's, it's just crushed. That stuff's not coming back. Even if I try the shadow shadows here. Yeah, I'm just lifting up black, and black is becoming gray. So it's not ideal. I personally don't like it. I've tried it a number of times, but I've never really adopted it. It's just not my favorite way of color grading. If you like it, you know, great, go for it. Um, it's got a lot of options in here, but yeah, it's just not perfect. It may not work for you anyway if, if, if it crashes. I know a lot of people have that issue with it crashing. All right. That's my video on working with Zlog2 in DaVinci Resolve. If you have questions, uh, drop them down below. I'll, I'll link to this uh, post I made. So if you, you know, want to get in here and drop a question in this thread, feel free to do that. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.